Hello, my friends. May God bless you and bless you indeed. May the Holy Spirit come and meet your needs, your greatest need, which is entering the kingdom of God. Jesus is the door to the kingdom of God. And in order for you to enter his kingdom, you have to go through Jesus. Otherwise, it's not possible. You have to believe in him. You have to be an ally with him, to make a covenant, to marry him. He has to be your father, your husband, your wife. He has to be the first in your life, the first, which is the reason why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So let us understand better what the kingdom of God and his righteousness are. You are going to understand this verse well when we go back to the past, we go back to the beginning of everything, the start of all things. When God created Adam and Eve, God created them. They were not born of God. They were created, created by God's hands. So, when God created them, He then gave them a garden. There was a garden already prepared for them. They had everything, everything of the best. There was no diseases, no infirmities, there was no death, there was no evil. There was no evil, only good in the Garden of Eden is the, was the Garden of Good, which is truly the Kingdom of God. When you enter the Kingdom of God, that's how it is. Even though in the Kingdom of God, we are still in, in the context of this world, but we long for the day that we are going to enter the Kingdom of Heaven, and then yes, there will be no more world involved. But anyways, when God created them, He did so with perfection. Perfection. Adam and Eve were perfect, very perfect. However, this did not exempt them from the right of choosing or to make their own choices. God walked with them in the garden. God walked personally with them. He, they would see God. However, God said to Adam, Look, you have there everything that you want. All the trees, fruitful trees, of the best quality. You can eat of all of them. But there is one tree there, which is mine, and you cannot touch it. Do not touch its fruits, because the day that you touch it, then you are going to die. Why? Because you are going to be disobeying me. So do not touch this tree. Very well, you already know this story. Then they touched the tree, Okay, the devil suggested, but the devil did not take the fruit and put it down their throat. No, Eve decided to eat it. She got it with her own hands and enjoyed that fruit. So when she disobeyed the word of God, what God had already determined to them, then that was enough for the kingdom of evil and darkness to enter this world. Because up until then, the devil didn't have access to this world, let's say to the human world. But when human beings submitted themselves 
and listened to the voice of the devil, then they turned their back to the voice of God, which means they lost their innocence. They lost their innocence. So both of them fell into the great mistake, the serious mistake of disobeying God. And because of such disobedience, they were cast out from the garden of perfection, from the kingdom of God, just as Lucifer was also there in heaven. There in heaven, he desired, he desired to be like God. And as he couldn't do so, then what did he plan to do? His iniquity was that he said, I will make a kingdom that is contrary to everything that is godly. I will build a kingdom where I will be the only one and everybody will serve me. So he created the kingdom of evil and this was born there in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven because the angels also had and they still have the right to make their own choices. And he, Lucifer, which was the main angel, he decided that he wanted to be like God. So he rebelled against God and created the kingdom of evil, which didn't exist until then. Just like in the Garden of Eden, there was no, no such thing as evil. Evil didn't exist. But when Eve disobeyed the word of God, which means she rebelled against God's word, and then they got to know evil, the side of evil, the evil which the devil had created. And so just as the devil had created evil, so whoever would follow his voice would serve evil. And the third part of angels were invited to go to this kingdom and they went for it. And they fell alongside Lucifer. And Lucifer became Satan, which means Lucifer was full of light and he stopped being full of light to being full of darkness. And so it was with Adam and Eve. They rebelled against the word of God. And of course, if they rebelled, they could not remain in the kingdom of God. They couldn't stay in the Garden of Eden. So that's where hell started in this world. You can verify that everything in this world is a lie. Everything is a lie. The world is based on lies. People live a life of lies, of illusion and, and deceit. And because of these lies, the kingdom of the world prevails because a lie serves the devil, is to hear the voice of the devil. So whoever lies lives serving the devil because the devil is the father of lies. The world developed upon this idea which is evil, the idea of, of lying. So from that moment on, Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden and they started their life elsewhere. So with sin came death. There was no death. Man was made to live for eternity. And science proves that. Science shows that man was not created to live a hundred, a hundred and fifty years. Man was made to live forever. However, however, man out of their own free will came to obey the voice of evil, of lie, and consequently have been reaping the hell that you can see in this world. Now, pay attention. It does not mean that there is no solution anymore. What did God do? In order to save 
those who are sincere, those who love truth, those who like righteousness, those who want things done correctly. So to these people who want what is right, Jesus came into the world, God became flesh, he materialized in flesh and bones like us, subject to the same temptations and needs and the same problems. He came into this world and as a holy, pure and perfect man, he was able then to be sacrificed. He could die then for those who love truth, those who want to live in righteousness. So Jesus died and brought upon his body all the curse from this world that people carry around. So for example, he died for you. Even if you don't accept him, even if you reject him, no problem, he still died for you. He's done his part. He's done his work. If you don't accept it, then you are going to be left out. You are still out of God's kingdom. And obviously, you will continue to live in the kingdom of evil, the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of evil, which does everything contrary to the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of good. And so what happens? He brought upon himself on the cross all curses, infirmity, diseases, including death, everything, everything. And after he, he took this package of sin to, to the tomb, to death, but he did not stay there, he resurrected. The Holy Spirit resurrected him and then confirmed all of his words, confirmed everything that he had promised. Now, who receives it? Those who believe. Those who believe. Whoever believes will be saved. Whoever does not believe is already condemned. By the way, whoever does not believe is dead. Did you know that? Whoever lives in the kingdom of this world is already dead. They are dead for God. Now, when the person hears the word of God and the word of the kingdom of God and they surrender and they submit themselves to the ethics and dignity and honor and truth and righteousness to what is righteous, then this person is showing that they want to get out of the tomb. They don't want to be dead anymore. They want to resurrect. So Jesus comes and resurrects this person. That's what happened to me. It happened to me. He resurrected me. I was dead in my sins and lusts. I was condemned to live in eternity in, in prison, in jail, in the pain of the lake of fire and brimstone. But because of the mercy of God, He made me know His word and I accepted His word. I said, I want to abandon the world of lies and enter the world of truth. So the kingdom of God is the world of truth, is the kingdom of truth, because Jesus is the truth. So when we preach the gospel to the whole world, we know that the vast majority will not accept it. The majority will go to hell. They are already dead and they do not want to resurrect and it will continue this way. But we also know that there are very few, a very few amount of people who want the truth, who desire for the truth, who want to walk in righteousness, even though they are living sin, but they do not want sin. They want to get out of it. So God gives these people this opportunity. Those who are sincere and they accept, as it was my case. And thank God, up until today, we are talking about Jesus. It's been 59 years now that we have been serving the Lord Jesus. 59 years. I never gave up. I never even thought. It never crossed my mind to give up. It hasn't even crossed my mind since the first day 
that I met the truth. Thank God. And this is what God wants to give you. Jesus wants you to have the kingdom of God inside of you. When you are possessed, when you take possession of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God will possess you. And then you are going to have peace. Peace is something natural. Even though we still live in this world, we are going to have problems. The problems that the world brings upon us. Then we are going to have to face problems and difficulties and tribulations and struggles. However, however, we are not going to let go of the kingdom of God. We are going to continue in the kingdom of God. And then we have that satisfaction, that purity, the greatness of the assurance, the conviction that the Holy Spirit himself bears witness inside of us. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit that gives us the certainty inside our mind, not, not our heart, not, not in our heart. He speaks to our spirit, in your spirit, not in your heart. And when He speaks, you understand right here in your mind, not in your heart. Whoever lives in the world of darkness, the world of hell, in the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of death, they live according to their heart. So they make decisions based on feelings. And that's why their life is hell. You already know. You based your life upon, you based your decisions upon your feelings, then you are lost. For sure, things are going to go wrong. And that's why many are reaping the wrong fruit of their choices. And we are here to announce to you that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of peace, of life an eternal life. Now, you are the one who choose, but where are you going to choose? In your heart or in your mind, in your intellect, in your reasoning? That's why we call it intelligent faith. Whoever has intelligent faith lives eternity with God. Whoever doesn't have it will have an emotional faith and will submit themselves. They are forced to submit themselves to that deceitful heart. You decide, my friend. Jesus is the King of the Kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. He guides, He leads, He conducts those who submit their will to the will of God. Those who truly want with all of their heart and with all of their strength to serve the King and Lord Jesus Christ and do His will, because His will is always better. His will always brings glorious results, sweet like honey. And you decide your life. If you want, indeed, of course, you have to pay the price. You are going to be rejected. You are going to be insulted. You are going to be hated, persecuted. Because whoever is in the kingdom of darkness does not understand those who are in the kingdom of light. Whoever is in the kingdom of the devil does not understand those who are in the kingdom of God. Those who are in the kingdom of hell, well, they want everybody to get lost, to die, and everyone will get to know, and they'll be the first one to find out about their death. But whoever is in the kingdom of God, they want to save. They want to stretch out their hand to bring a word of faith, of motivation, of strength, of salvation above all. So that's how it works. Now imagine, when will the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness combine? It will never happen. That's, it's not possible. It's not possible. Light cannot submit to darkness. Neither can darkness be, let's say, omissive to the light. No, it has to live. And the same thing is our will. Our will is sovereign. 
if we want, if we really want to enter the kingdom of God, we have to submit our will, our desires, our lust, our sins. We have to give it. And Jesus is ready to accept, to wash and purify us. But you, you have to continue living submissive to his word, obeying his word, so that you may leave the kingdom of darkness and go back as if you were Adam and Eve to the Garden of Eden, the kingdom of God. Okay? We are going to end it here today, and tomorrow we are going to be back. This New Year's Eve night video, we are going to be live with you all in the Temple of Solomon. And obviously, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we are going to break into a new year, but not just into a new year, but we are going to break into a new life. Be intelligent. You're going to break into a, the kingdom of God. Leave the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. In this New Year's Eve night vigil, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. Okay? May God bless you in the name of Jesus, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, before I forget, today is the night of the soul. That's when we feed the souls which are lost in need without direction in order for them to have a direction, for them to find guidance so that they can live the life that Jesus has promised to them. Life and life with abundance. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.